Welcome to this morning's service from St Peter's Carlton Colville. My name's Mark Ellis, I'm the lay minister there. This morning's service is a little bit different in that we're welcoming Sarah and Melissa from Home for Good Suffolk, uh, the Christian Adoption and Fostering Agency. For those of us in the fellowship, we know Sarah well, but both of them are going to talk about Home for Good and they're going to encourage us to support as a church their work and the home for good itself but first of all let's worship God in the words when I needed a neighbour were you there Before we hear from Melissa and Sarah, I'd just like to read a statement from Home for Good that is on their website. Because God calls us to respond. Throughout the Bible, we're reminded of God's heart for the vulnerable, and particularly those without a family to love and protect them. Psalm 68 verse 6 says this, a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. The Bible uses the terms fatherless and orphans to describe children who did not have the stability and protection of a family. In contemporary culture, we do not use these terms. But we recognise that children coming into care are also in need of stability and protection. As God's children, adopted into his great family. We are called to care for the vulnerable as part of our worship, to defend those unable to defend themselves, and to seek justice on their behalf. James reminds us that religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. And Isaiah says, learn to do right. Seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless. Hi, uh, many people may know me. Um, I'm Stella Allen and I currently go to um, St. Peter's Church, Colton Colville. Um, some of you may know that um, I'm a foster carer with Suffolk County Council and have been there for three years. Um, I, I suddenly started to come into fostering um, 
when I went to Spring Harvest um, a good few years ago, um, they had um, a seminar um, on Home for Good. Um, I went along and um, I was really touched by what they were talking about and about how vulnerable, um, there are so many vulnerable children around the UK and um, they all need homes. And it was just that evening when I heard about the work of Home for Good that I felt God was touching me to become um, a foster carer and I really felt that God was telling me that that's what he wanted me to do. So from then on, um, when I got home, um, I started to research into becoming a foster carer. It took a little while, um, but then I, um, with the support of Home for Good, um, I managed to um, achieve and become a foster carer. At the moment, I have I've fostered many children, and at the moment I have a child under three, um, who sometimes attend the church, some of you may be aware of. Um, but um, Home for Good is a great charity, that, it's a Christian charity that helps and supports foster carers, adopters and special guardianships. Um, Melissa, uh, is, Melissa is um, the coordinator of, uh, the, uh, in Suffolk area and uh, there are also um, champions which um, I myself am. Um, the champions role is to help um, provide activities and support for the foster care to doctors and special guardianships around the area. Um, we're hoping that um, the churches around uh, Lower Stuff and the wider community will get on board with us, as you may hear in the video that Melissa has that you will see in a few minutes. Uh, it would be really great if uh, St Peter's can get on board and support myself and all the other carers in the area so that we can help shape the lives of these vulnerable children and as you can see and appreciate that um, these children need all the love and care that they can get. Uh, we don't, and also um, prayer, prayer is the most important thing too. Um, we, we value everybody's prayers um, for these children to help them achieve and but if, you know, and also as we are sour too, um, we do not get um, grants or anything. So any donations to help our charity would be much appreciated. Um, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, and I would like to, um, you know, perhaps when the lockdown is finished, um, me and Melissa will come and do a service, and where we can ask a lot more questions. Um, but please don't, um, please feel free to ask any questions um, that you may have through our closed Facebook page um, and I will be happy to answer them. And if I can't answer them, then perhaps Melissa can get in touch too. I hope you enjoyed the video and it will give you some uh, insight into what Home for Good is all about. Um, and I would recommend if anybody is feeling um, feeling that they would like to get more involved than um, the, the book um, that the founder of Home for Good has written, which is Home, um, which you will see in the video, is a good starting point to find out more about the work of Home for Good and to learn about what the organisation is all about. Um, well, thank you for listening and I really hope that this will um, give you all a good opportunity to um, see what Home for Good is all about and, as you know, um, will help you understand about our precious children. Um, you know, God, God called every children to be a child of God and um, I feel that um, we're all, we're all children, uh, we're children in God's name. Amen. Thank you, Sarah, and especially for your little person. We're going to sing Power to Glow. Did you know, did you 
know what? Oh, oh, oh. Yo. The Holy Spirit is our God living inside us Did you know, did you know what? Oh, oh, oh. Yo. We are the church and we're shining in the darkness Holy Spirit, help us to share God's love God's love Power to glow, glow, glow to glow, glow, glow By the Holy Spirit We are all empowered to glow To glow Did you know, did you know What? Uh, uh, oh, oh no. The Holy Spirit is alive and always with us Did you know, did you know What? Uh, uh, oh, oh no. We are the church lighting up the world for Jesus Holy Spirit Help us to share God's love, God's love. Power to glow, glow, glow. Power to glow, glow, glow. By the Holy Spirit, we are all empowered to glow, to glow. Church Warden Bob will read from the Gospel of John. Good morning. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of St John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. It's carrying on with Jesus is giving his disciples encouragement for when he's gone, because like all of us, we will be worried. So it's John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long the world will not see me any more. But you will see me because I live and will also be lived. On that day, you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss! The father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring. Sin upon his shoulders, a shame. Hi, it's great to be able to join you today. My name is Melissa and I've been invited by your church to share the work of national Christian charity, Home for Good. I was meant to be joining you in person, but because of our current circumstances and social distancing, I've used the technology that I've got available to bring you this talk on video today. I do hope you're going to enjoy it. I didn't want to delay the opportunity of sharing with you the work of Home for Good and what's happening here in Suffolk to make this national vision a reality here in our locality. I'd like to start by sharing a little bit about myself and this will help you to understand um, why I got involved with Home for Good and why I want to make a difference in our county. 17 years ago, me and my husband were married and we were keen to start a family straight away but life doesn't always go according to your plans. After several years trying, pregnancy still didn't happen for us. So we sought medical advice. After investigations, we were told that the only way that we'd have a baby was through IVF, and the current waiting list was 18 months long. We were obviously devastated at this time. We put our names down on the waiting list and we plodded along, thinking about the family we so desperately wanted. We had so many questions. Would it actually work? How much might it cost us? How many rounds of IVF will we have to go through? Is there another way? And that made us think, surely there are children out there already born who need a loving and stable home those who can't safely be cared for by their birth family. 
and that was exactly the home that we could provide. So we got in touch with Suffolk County Council. Um, they came and spoke to us with an initial visit exploring adoption. They invited us to an adoption evening and it was after that that we decided yes, adoption was the way that we were going to have our family. We had not just one, but two children join us. They were 20 months and three years at the time. This is them during our introductions. They've now grown so much and they're now 12 and 13. And this is our family now. I feel so blessed that through adoption, we were able to become the parents to two children who really needed a loving and stable place that they could call home. Our children are just two of the 40,000 children who come into the UK care system every year. That's about 109 children every day. And there just simply isn't enough adoptive and foster homes for them. This is Krish Kandai. He's the founder and director of Home Figured. And he's got this message for us. Right now, there are thousands of children waiting to be adopted across the UK. And our nation needs thousands more foster carers to care for the most vulnerable children. Many children are leaving foster care inadequately equipped for life. And we think the church has got a vital role to play in this. Wouldn't it be amazing if in the next 10 years, every child in the UK that needs one gets a home for good? Wouldn't it be fantastic if every foster or adoptive family gets the support they need from a, a church wrapping around them? Wouldn't it be fantastic if every local church was a brilliant place to bring looked after children? Friends, that's a huge vision. And we're doing our level best to make it happen. We're busy inspiring and equipping churches, running campaigns to find homes for vulnerable kids, wrapping around and supporting families who have taken in kids through foster care or adoption. We're speaking up for the vulnerable child in the highest places, whether that's in the media or in the government. We can't possibly do it without your help. So Home for Good is a Christian response to this social need. Home for Good believes that God calls us his church to respond, and that together we can make a difference to these vulnerable children's lives. Throughout the Bible, we are reminded about God's heart for the vulnerable, particularly those without a family to love or protect them. Psalm 68, 6 says this, A father to the fatherless, a defender of the widows, is God in his holy dwelling. God sets the lonely in families. 99% of the children who come into the care system come in not because they're relinquished, but they can't be cared for safely in their birth homes. They often come from chaotic, traumatic, abusive and neglectful situations. They all need love, protection, stability, lots of patience and a place they can call home. It was through my adoption process that my eyes were open to the need for more homes for these vulnerable children. And a couple of years down the line, we started fostering. It was at this time that I learned about the work of Home Figured. As a Christian, an adoptive parent and a foster carer, I felt compelled to get involved. So in 2014, I started the local movement for Home for Good here in Suffolk. Our local movement is one of 12 running up and down the UK. We are independent of Home for Good, but still connected through that shared vision that God calls us to respond and that together we can make a difference to vulnerable children. Home for Good Suffolk has got two main aims. The first one is to raise awareness in Suffolk churches. And we do this by talking to churches just like you. So we're so pleased that you've invited us here today. We want to raise awareness. We want to get people talking about this need. So share with those that you know what you've heard today. We hope that your eyes have been open 
and your hearts have been stirred. You might like to explore things a bit further. You can look at the Home for Good book. Or you as a church could actually have a small group looking at the foundation course. This looks biblically and practically more at fostering and adoption. We know that fostering and adoption isn't something that everyone can do, but everyone can play their part. Maybe you can help cook and hold a home for good meal. This is an opportunity to invite people you know and those in local churches around you to come and find out more. Come and listen to foster carers and adopters share their stories. We'd like every church that we're in contact with to have a champion. So if you've got any questions or ideas, please speak to her. Churches can become home for good churches as well. That means they agree that our work is vital and that they are happy to stand with us and work with us to make a difference. No one is too old to fundraise, as we've heard from Captain Tom Moore. Maybe as a church you can think of a way of fundraising for us at Home for Good Suffolk. Everybody can pray too. We have a news bulletin that goes out every term. Please sign up for that. There are prayer points at the bottom and pray with us and for us. So Home for Good provides resources for churches and Mothering Sunday, Father's Day and Adoption Sunday in November. This helps churches to constantly raise the profile of adoption and fostering in their churches. Our second aim is to ensure that families who foster, adopt or provide special guardianship are well supported. That's those in our church, but also those in our community. It's important that families who have fostered or adopted children or those with special guardianship feel welcome in your church. So if you've got a family at your church, see how you can support them. Our church helped provide meals for when our children arrived. This was so, so helpful as it allowed us to just enjoy our time together. They also provided equipment that might be helpful to us at the time. And when we had uh, one of our foster babies who just couldn't be put down and needed cuddling all the time, someone came round to babysit once a week so me and my husband could enjoy a meal together. There are lots of ways that you can support families. Some churches have offered cleaning or ironing or DIY. It's important to us that there's lots of events and activities that carers can come to to network with others. Last year we put on 48 different events and met 145 different families through the events we were providing. This gives families an opportunity to meet with others, to make friends and to build a network of support around them. We also have regular connect groups usually run in term time, meeting once or twice a month. Just for a coffee or chat or a play. These might be daytime or evening. Obviously these can't happen at the moment and we're trying to meet up with families on video link instead. But getting together with other carers who understand is so important to these families too. We want to make sure all families are welcome to this, regardless of their faith. Well, thank you for listening. I do hope you feel more informed about the work of Home for Good and Home for Good Suffolk here. If you've got any questions, email me on the details provided next. We do hope you have a wonderful week. Stay safe and God bless. As we consider the words and the message that Sarah and Melissa have shared with us this morning, let's take a moment to be quiet and pray for home for good for the children. I'm going to play a piece 
called Holy Spirit, you are welcome here.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there seems to be so much to be praying for at this most challenging time that we may ever know in our lives. So first of all, we need to say thank you for our lives, for our loved ones, family, friends and neighbours. Thank you for this new day and the peaceful area where we live. Thank you for this month of May with its sunny days and its blustery days. Thank you for nature, buds beginning to burst into flower and bird life flying around everywhere. Over the past few weeks, we've been watching goldfinches, blue tits, blackbirds, pigeons, starlings, doves, magpies, robins and little wrens. Most of them have been swooping down to use our bird bath either to take a drink or to have a bath. Your creation in abundance really lifts our spirits and we thank you for all the animals from foxes to deer, hedgehogs, badgers, goats, even sheep coming into our towns and cities, no longer scared stiff by so much traffic on our roads. What a wonderful world it would be, as Louis Armstrong used to sing, if after the pandemic this could be part of our new norm. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we are sorry to hear of so many job losses across the board, from small businesses to large businesses, and families suffering for the loss of their parents' usual income. And we pray for them, Lord, we pray for all of them. But Lord, where we can learn lessons from these challenging times, we also pray that we do. With less traffic on the roads and in the air, we can and we could continue to breathe better air. We could hear birdsong all year round instead of a constant stream of traffic and noise pollution. And we give thanks that we're seeing cyclists everywhere and people are beginning to think twice about taking the car out. Dear Lord, we love this planet and it's wonderful to see it bouncing back. For every disadvantage, there always seems to be an advantage. So please help us in our community and beyond to take advantage of these times and put them to good use and for a greater purpose that will benefit all. We thank you for the many people who can work from home and will continue to work from home and to contribute to a simpler way of living. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the frontline workers whom we applaud each week on our doorsteps every Thursday evening, thinking of the NHS for their absolute bravery to carry on day in, day out, saving lives and helping others either to recover or to leave this world peacefully. I'm sure we all know someone or several of these workers. And when we clap on Thursday nights, let us bring their faces to mind. We pray for all the dustbin men, people who service in shops and supermarkets, postmen, chemists, paramedics, our police and military and teachers, all of our key workers. We pray for everyone to still bear in mind the stay home and save lives instruction that we received at the beginning of the pandemic and to not go on any unnecessary journeys. We give thanks to the new measures of getting society back to work and pray that safety is at the forefront of the minds of every employer and every employee to remain well and free of coronavirus in the workplace. And we pray for children who may be returning to school at the beginning of June and their teachers and for retail outlets that will open gradually and for the hospitality industry to be thinking ahead for when they reopen restaurants in July. And we pray for all churches across the United Kingdom to know when is the right time to reopen and have service, services in safety again. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray for those in our own government and throughout the world. We pray for those in the worlds of science and medicine to get it right so that a new wave of this deadly virus will not follow. We pray for the United Kingdom and Europe and the rest of the world to move toward a more safe way of living our lives with the help of the new app, which may have to become an integral part of our lives, ensuring that we remain safe, as well as socially distancing and washing our hands and all of those other measures. We thank you, Lord, for the numbers of deaths decreasing in hospitals, care homes and the wider community. We pray for all those who have lost dear ones to COVID-19 and pray for those unable to be with their loved ones at the end. Such a cruel disease now needs a vaccine and medicine and we pray with all of our hearts that the world works together to find one. We pray for all the work that is being done in this field, particularly here at home in Oxford and abroad. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Whilst all this hard work goes on each and every day, we pray that we can live useful lives in our communities, helping others whenever we can. Being good neighbours, volunteering, or simply picking up the phone or sending an email to someone who may be lonely. And we thank you for those still contributing to our own church life every Sunday, for Mark's virtual services put together by Rubin and for all those who take part. It really feels a privilege to do so. We pray for those involved with the work at Home for Good. We pray for all the foster caring that they carry out and especially for Sarah, our Sarah, at St Peter's, for all the love and support she gives to children. It's so heartwarming. For the stability that she's currently giving to the lovely little boy that we used to see when we went to church, running round the church and playing in the children's corner. May Home for Good continue to carry on this amazing work, giving children of all ages care and compassion and the opportunity to develop and grow and feel a sense of security. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for anyone known to us who may be suffering emotionally, mentally, physically or spiritually because of the times we're now living through or for their own reasons. And we'll now have a few moments of silence to bring before you their names, dear Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
can never be alone Cause Father God, you're there beside me close with a Celtic blessing of peace. Peace between neighbours, peace between kindred, peace between lovers in the love of the King of life, peace between person and person, peace between wife and husband, peace between women and children, the peace of Christ above all peace. Bless, O Christ, my face, let my face bless everything. Bless, O Christ, mine eye. Let mine eye bless all it sees. Amen. So go in the peace of Christ. <laughs>